things that we need to look at with elasticity. If we're not just talking about different elasticities on one curve, we need to look at it in terms of which types of products are likely to have more relatively elastic or relatively inelastic curves on the whole. Okay, so let's throw a couple things up here. elastic. It tends to be more flat, closer to a horizontal. If we're talking about a demand curve that is more relatively inelastic, it tends to be a lot closer to vertical. Now, why is that the case? Let's say we take a given price level. Okay? Here's our quantity demanded on our first curve, and here's our quantity on our second curve. Same price level. Now, what happens if we increase price by another 50%? That would be right about here. Well, on the relatively elastic curve, we went down to zero. Because people are not willing to buy anything at that price. And on our relatively inelastic curve, we only went down by a very small margin. Big change, any bitty change. Same change in price. For a given change in price, we see a much bigger reaction on the elastic curve than we do on the inelastic curve. Same thing for a price decrease. If we went down, again, we'd see a big jump here and an itty bitty jump here. So, what are some of the products that we tend to see with more elastic versus inelastic curves? Let me just get rid of a couple things here so I have some more room. All right. More elastic luxuries. don't need, things that are pricier, other things that would be relatively elastic, particular brand names. Now, let's say, for example, that we're talking about shoes. If you're talking about a product category like shoes, we're going to put that over here. If you're talking about Reeboks, for example, or Pumas, a particular brand, you don't necessarily have to have. If the price went way up, you'd be like, I'm buying something else. That's what most people would do. So, luxuries, brand names, things that you can live without. Goods that have lots of substitutes, which ties us into the brand names thing. Okay? All of those would tend to be more elastic. And if you're talking about time frame, actually, let me come back to that one after we do this. This will make more sense. Hold that thought. All right. If we come over here to the inelastic curve, necessities. A classic example that you are bound to see in a multiple choice question is insulin for diabetics. I've seen that one so many times because it's something that they cannot live without. They have to have it. If the price went up, they would still pretty much buy exactly the same thing because it's something that they need. Necessities. Um, to kind of piggyback on that, things that are addictive. If 
If something is addictive, then you're not going to care how much it is. If you have to have it, you have to have it. Product categories, as opposed to a brand name. Like I might go back to buying, you know, department store uh, Kmart shoes, but I ain't gonna like walk around barefoot. Exactly, because you have substitutes for a particular brand name. You don't have a lot of good substitutes for shoes. Barefoot is not really a substitute for a shoe. Now, those are some of the most basic things that we tend to see. If we're talking about time. In the short run, demand tends to be more inelastic. What does the short run mean? Short run means that it's a time period in which some of your behavior cannot be adjusted. It's a time period in which at least something in the situation is fixed. You know, maybe you can't change your spending on your rent, for example. Maybe your landlord raises your rent. You got to put up with it for a couple months before you can move out. Okay, that would be your short run. Something is fixed in the short run. At least one factor you can't change in the short run. Now, on the other side, we can talk about the long run. In the long run, everything is variable. In the long run, companies will have more time to develop more substitutes. They'll have time for other products to be invented. They'll have time to adjust your spending and your behavior. But if we're talking about today, let's say we mean like the demand for gasoline right here in this zip code today. If your car is on empty, and you need gas, you need gas. You're going to go put gas in your car no matter how much it costs. If it's on empty, fill your car up. So you can't do anything about it today. But if gas went up to, say, $5 a gallon, maybe you'd start carpooling. Maybe you'd come up with some other way to get to school. You know, somebody said this morning, ride a bike. It's a great idea. I don't know how many people would, would uh, take that up. Um, but the idea is that you have time to adjust. You can consolidate your errands, for example, if you're talking about driving a car. So, long run, you can make adjustments. Short run, you can't. And you will probably see some questions about this um, on your test this year. 